For any folks who utilize Line 6's incredible Helix native software, and it really is an amazing piece of software. I utilize it all the time for reamping within my DAW and sometimes just for creating tones depending on where I am if I'm working on my laptop. It's just a really handy piece of software to have and Helix and HX Stomp users get a great discount on it. It's almost a no-brainer. The one complaint that I hear the most about it though is that people wish it was just a standalone app application that they could use without having to open up a DAW such as Reaper or Cubase or whatever other DAW of choice you have. We've got to open it up, load a track, you know, put native on the track. And it just seems like a lot of effort sometimes if you just want to plug in and jam with Helix Native much like you can with some other computer-based guitar modelers. Well, is it possible to make Helix into a quote unquote standalone application. And the reason I'm doing this is no, I mean, Helix native is not a standalone application. But what if we could kind of get there without having to have the added expense of having a DAW for those people who aren't into recording and they don't really have any other use for a DAW? It seems a shame to have to go and get yourself a digital audio workstation just to host. So what can we do? Well, there's a really interesting free little application that we can download onto our computer that will work really well for this purpose. You might be asking what it is. Well, without further ado, let's dive right in and take a look and see how this works. So the first thing you're gonna do is go over to tone2.com slash nanohost.html. And what Tone2 has available is this little application called Nanohost. Now, the one thing you will notice, the supported operating systems are Windows-based or Linux with Wine. So this is really a Windows-based application. I'm a Windows user, longtime Windows user. I know a lot of other folks are, but I know there's also a lot of folks who are Apple users. And I'm sure maybe, I don't know anything about the Apple ecosystem, but I'm sure there's probably a similar VST host application for Apple-based system. So anybody who knows of any, please leave uh, leave a comment. So basically, you're going to download this now for free. The beautiful part about this is, it notice it says it's free, requires no registration. You're allowed to share it with your friends. They're really open about this. Uh, it only supports VST2 plugin formats at either 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, supported sound card drivers are ASIO, MME, and Direct Sound. All the different sample rates we could ask for and uh, format for recordings 32-bit wave and stereo. So it really does meet all the requirements we would need to be able to host Helix Native. Now on my system, I only had Helix Native installed as a VST3 plugin. So it wasn't showing up at first, obviously, because it's not supported, but I simply just reinstalled Helix Native and checked off the VST2 option and put that in its own folder, as you'll see in a moment. So I've already downloaded this. And after you download it and unzip it or extract the file, this is what you get. You get a manual, you get Nanohost 32-bit or 64-bit and a what's new readme text document file. Since I am dealing with a 64-bit version of Helix Native, we want to deal with Nanohost 64-bit. So here's what happens when I double click on this. It opens Nanohost, but it gives me an option to select which particular VST plugin I want to open in it. I'm going to navigate over to where I downloaded my special VST2 version of Helix Native. So I put that in a folder called VST2 Native. You'll notice that the .dll plugin file is showing. I double click this and what you'll notice is in just a second, we have a working version of Helix Native. Now we do have to configure this properly. Let me just resize this window so it's into my screen capture software. And here I have my 2204 ultimate preset from the Line 6 Marketplace. And we'll take a listen to that in just a second. But first of all, you want to configure your nano host. So we go up here and it says audio output settings. Well, I want to use the Helix as my audio output. So I choose ASIO Helix. I could have chosen my Focusrite USB, but I'm using that to record the audio for this video right now. So I'm going to choose Helix, your buffer size, which you can choose whatever is gonna work best for you. I'll start with 128 samples. Sample rate of 48,000 hertz, and we will say okay. Now, the other thing we can do here is we can open up the control panel and change our buffer size if we find that there's some latency. And we can also have our output channels assigned. Another neat thing you'll notice is it's set BPM. So if you want to have your delays, let's say, you know, uh, set to uh, actual tempo for a song, we can come in here and change that. I could set that to 105 and you'll notice 
up here in the corner of Helix Native, it's changing the tempo as we go. I'll set that to 100 and be done with it. So let's see, does this actually work? <laughs> There you have it. I'm playing Helix Native, hosted by this program by Tone2 called NanoHost. I have all the features I want. I could switch over to another preset. This is my JS Deluxe Vibe Ultimate preset from the Line 6 Marketplace. <laughs> Now you might ask how the latency is. It's not too bad. There might be a little tiny bit, but again, we could always come in here to our control panel and see if we can't bring that down to its quickest setting. <laughs> Now, uh, that feels even a little bit better as far as latency goes. Uh, depending on how powerful your CPU is, you might end up with some audio artifacts from clicking and popping. That's the same as working in a DAW. The lower you get your latency, the more load there is on the CPU, and the more chance you have of maybe some clicks and pops coming in there. So you'll have to base that around your system and see if this is going to be a usable option for you. But another neat feature is you can see up here that the CPU usage is always shown, and we're only hovering somewhere around between 20 and 30 percent. <laughs> And again, I can flip back and forth here between different presets. And there you have it. I have a version of Helix Native that I can use with a free plugin, have it opened up very quickly, works really well for the amount of time I've used it on my system. I guess there is the possibility that folks with a different computer system may have varying results. I don't really know. I can only test it on my system. And I also apologize to the Mac Apple users that I don't have a way of testing and I, I didn't really look for a solution for Mac. But again, like I said, for any Mac users down, please leave a comment down below if you know of any free hosts like this so that Mac users can also have this ability to run Helix Native as a quote unquote standalone app. All right, what do you guys think? I thought that was pretty cool. And like I said, I apologize to the Apple slash Mac users simply because I, it's not my little world that I live in using their ecosystem for any of this. But like I said, I'm sure with a quick Google search that you could probably find something similar, I hope, I would imagine. The Apple Mac world always seems to be on top of this type of stuff, and probably even more so than the Windows world. But I thought I'd just put this idea out there because I have had a lot of people ask is there any way that I can kind of run Helix Native without having to get a digital audio workstation? You know, a lot of people's complaint is simply that I don't have a DAW, I don't record, I don't do studio work. I just want to be able to plug in and play with my Helix tones straight from my computer, and this would be a fabulous solution. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that that's something useful. Please like the video and share it with anybody that you think would get some use or even just enjoyment out of watching it. And please subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. The link is below for NanoHost. Go grab it. Let me know how it works for you. Like I said, it worked great for me on my system, and I'm very curious to see if it works out so well for some other folks. And also, like I mentioned a few times already, please leave any comments below about a comparable solution for the Apple slash Mac ecosystem. Thank you guys again for sharing your time with me. I'll be back really soon with some more content. Ciao for now.